morning today i want to transition from faith to me as we've been talking a lot about faith and what that means and the implications of faith and i want to move into what it means to be meek as we talk about just the fact that the bible says jesus himself said it the meek shall inherit the earth and uh you could define meekness as gentle humility uh and and if we were to look at it in those terms and i i tend to think and believe that faith in jesus christ and who he is should always lead to meekness uh, if you know in whom you have believed and you know that he is able to keep that which you commit to him you can afford to be meek you can afford to be humble and gentle and meek you can afford to be what's considered uh, a mild individual in a lot of aspects and in his sermon on the mount uh, jesus listed a series of blessings and, and we call those beatitudes those blessings that have come to be known they've become to be known as beatitudes and they get their name uh actually from the latin vulgate scriptures uh, because each of the blessings begins with the word beati which means uh, happy or blessed is and, and each comes with a promise and so as we look at the beatitudes <coughs> we see that now i want to just look at one aspect of the beatitudes and in matthew 5 5 we'll have other scriptures to look at but if you join in matthew 5 5 we see the lord says this blessed are those who are gentle they will inherit the earth that very statement of the lord's to us is a contradiction to our cultural understanding and values that we live in a society that thinks that it has to grab things and, and we don't realize that it through meekness or or humble gentle humility is how we inherit the gifts of the lord so I, I want to develop that idea. Now, while it's not a commonly used word in our language today, uh, I tend to like or prefer the translation meek uh, of this original language word because I think meekness carries the meaning of this term beyond just the phrase gentleness. And, and you know, gentle humility, uh, humble gentleness, however you want to see that, that's the idea carried here. And, and I want to develop it. It comes from a Greek word, praus, and it's gentleness of strength. And I find that fascinating, a gentleness of strength, or, or in very, the very essence, it's strength under control. And it was a, originally, a, in the antiquities, it was often used to describe horses that could have so much power and yet respond so gently to the master's command. And if we think about what meekness is, it's strength under control. I, I had a friend uh, that used to log with horses, horses, big, massive animals. And, and I remember having the opportunity to be in the forest with him when he was using them. And, and, and they were obeying every whisper. And he would be talking to these massive beasts as they would they would be pulling logs through the forest and, and he'd be speaking to them and their ears were tuned to him and they, were, they had the power to pull a tremendous loads and yet all that power was under control and responded to the whisper of their master. And I think when I think of meekness as strength under control, uh, and that what a beautiful idea because we live in a society that always wants to manifest strength rather than control strength and and i just think about that it's the idea of the mild the gentle as opposed to the proud and ambitious the kind who succeed in such a kingdom and so to succeed in god's kingdom requires meekness gentle humility the the kind of strength that you have that's under control where it's not flaunted it's just lived uh, Wycliffe, when he translated uh, the, the Latin into English, translated it, blessed be mild men. And of course, when he's using the phrase men, he's speaking of all humanity. Blessed be mild individuals, mild human beings, mild people. And in ancient times, in the, in the times of antiquities, <clears throat> the, 
the uh, the ancients didn't consider meekness a, a virtue. And, and prior to Jesus bringing this into the Beatitudes, it wasn't readily considered a virtue. Much like our postmodern times that we're living in now, which uh, meekness isn't always honored. It's it, People are always seeking fame and pushing themselves out there, and, and we idolize the the kind of athletes and people that go for the gusto and all those kinds of things. And yet, Jesus viewed meekness as a virtue. And, and so we see that. And Jesus was the first to elevate this term prouse to a nobility that had never, it had never seen before. And, and so we, 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 we see that. And, and in our current English, the term has lost its fine blend of, of spiritual poise and strength established by Jesus. So when Jesus is saying this, and he, he says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, he is describing a scenario of, of spiritual poise and, um, and strength combined together that gives you the power and the wherewithal to, to serve the kingdom of God. And if we look at the Lord Jesus Christ, he wasn't, he wasn't that kind of person that burst on the scene larger than life. He was always meek and mild and gentle. And we, we see these aspects. We know he did cleanse the temple and he drove the animals out. So we understand he had courage and strength. He certainly had all power as, as Almighty God. But yet he describes himself as meek and lowly. And I want us to note that, Jesus' own description of himself. As he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Because I'm meek and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. And, and you know, the Lord is calling us to be mentored by him. And you hear people, we used to talk about discipleship, and, and sometimes people still do, you know, and we say, oh, we need someone to disciple us, or we need someone to mentor us. I have to tell you, a relationship with Jesus Christ is all about being discipled by him. A relationship with Jesus Christ is all about being mentored by Jesus Christ. The reason we go to the scriptures, the reason we, we read the word of God, the reason we pray, the reason we call out on his name is because we want his yoke on our shoulders. We want his burden on our back. We want to learn from him and be mentored by the Lord Jesus. You don't want to just look for the, the religions of humanity to disciple you. You want to be discipled by a relationship with Jesus, and that's life-changing. And the Lord does it in meekness and, and, and humility. And, and that's, that's amazing because when Jesus is saying, come to me for I am meek and lowly, he's almighty God. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the creator of heaven and earth. And he's the one to whom all shall bow. And he calls himself meek and lowly. When you think about the, the humility of God. And a lot of times people don't think about the humility of God or what is required. But God has to bow himself to relate to, relate to man. Now what tremendous humility it took for God to be made flesh as Jesus was, and walk on this earth, that we might be saved. And in fact, I wrote a paper on that way back 100 years ago in Bible college on the humility of God. And that was one of the uh, reactions I got when, you know, you're all in college and you're all thinking about, we were supposed to write about emotions that God might have or character traits, personality traits that God might have. And, and I chose humility and, and people are like, how are you going to do that? But as you search the scriptures, you find every act of God is an act of humility. That, that every, the gentleness of the Lord. That if we go to the Garden of Eden and we look at Adam and Eve and they have rebelled against the Lord and they've sinned. And yet God comes walking in the garden with them, speaking with them, relating to them, interacting to them 
in a very meek and humble way yes he establishes judgment in their lives but he could have just wiped them out we see him interacting with moses about the people of israel and and doing it with enough humility that he lets man speak to him and so in jesus we see this personified that there is a gentle humility in the character of christ and we can see that in some of the lord's servants we see moses was meek according to the scriptures and in numbers 12 3 it says, and the man Moses was very meek for more than any man who was on the face of the earth. And that's the story where Aaron and Miriam are, are basically bad mouth and Moses because they don't like their sister-in-law. Moses was married to an Ethiopian gal and Miriam was the real stinker there, it looks like. And, and they, were, they were challenging Moses' authority as the leader of Israel. And, and they're saying, hasn't God spoken to us and all these things? And there's a passage in there in Numbers 12 where it says, and God heard it. But Moses was meek and more than anyone else. And, and there's this humility that Moses carries in leadership. And that puts him in a place for God to defend him. And that's powerful. And the, the Hebrew, of course, we know Genesis you know, is Hebrew. And so the Hebrew word that's used there. Or, or excuse me, numbers is Hebrew, and the Hebrew word that's used there uh, for meek is anav, and it means the same thing. And in the, the Old Testament Greek, the LXX, it uses the same word that we just read, uh, the meek shall inherit the earth, praus. And, and this supports the whole idea behind turning the other cheek. And, and I would suggest to you that, that if you don't respond to your situations with meekness you won't get to see the lord standing up for you and as we look at this it's this, as i said it, it supports the turning the other cheek a meek person doesn't have to look out for number one you know people will say oh you got to look out for number one and, and of course when people are saying that they're talking about themselves but you don't have to if you're trusting in the Lord. And, and remember, I think meekness is a byproduct of true faith. And I believe that if you're trusting in the Lord to defend you, you don't have to defend you. Even as God says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. The point of that is I don't have to take vengeance. I don't have to seek retribution. I don't have to try to stand up for myself. Though we're all tempted to, and, and we often really long to, uh, we want to come back to this point in faith where we say, you know, I think I'll let God stick up for me. I think I'll let God stand for me. And even I, I'm reminded of the letter, letter uh, written to the church of Philippi in, in Revelation where the Lord says, you know, those who harassed you will come and know that you are a temple in the, you are a pillar in the temple of God. <clears throat> and God, when God stands up for his people, no one can deny it. And, and instead of looking out for number one, we should esteem others as better than ourselves. And we get that from Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. It says, don't act out of selfish ambition or be conceited. Instead, humbly think of others as better than yourself. Philippians 2, 3 is a definition of what it means to be meek or gentle or to, to, to have gentle humility in the presence of man and God. That we don't esteem, other, we esteem others as better than ourselves. Well, rather than acting out of selfish ambition, which is looking out for number one, that's selfish ambition, we esteem others as better. And we humbly think of others as better than ourselves. I think it's a perfect description, description of meekness. And if we continue, <clears throat> we begin to see that uh, so we, we establish what meekness is, this gentle humility that, that seems to escape our society. And, and it escapes so much of our society. It escapes our, our conversations. It escapes our, our interactions. It, it escapes our entertainment. It, 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 all these things that, that about meekness that just seems to escape us. And I think it's because our fallen nature fights against it. 
but we, we establish what it is. And even as we talked about it, we were like, yeah, we need to be gentle and we need to be humble. And then we realize that this kind of meekness leads to a blessed inheritance. And, and I think that's powerful, that meekness leads to an inheritance that's blessed of God. And, and he, what does he say? They will inherit the earth. And, and it reminds me, so back in the day, uh, in my younger years, I was a long haul truck driver and I drove all 48 states and part of Canada. I was in four provinces of Canada and the lower 48 states. And, and I was in and out all the big cities and running all over the place. And it's, it, it was quite a deal. And um, in the process, I was in Baltimore, I remember, at a, at a truck stop. And, and I'm walking in to get my dinner and and I see a guy walking out, and, and I still see him to this day for some reason, but he had a black T-shirt on, and it said on the letters, if the meek shall inherit the earth, who will drive the big trucks? And, and uh, I, I remember seeing that, and I remember thinking to myself, I have obviously was a believer, and I thought, he doesn't understand meekness. He doesn't understand it. And... Um, Meekness is not a lack of strength. It simply doesn't flaunt its strength. When we think of strength under control, it, it, it isn't a lack of strength. It's a, it's a strength that isn't flaunted. And, and he, so he makes this statement, they'll inherit the earth. And I want to talk about that, the word inherit, and it, it is, uh, it's something you receive. Now, we know that. That's what an inheritance is to us. And so think about an inheritance. It's something you receive that someone else worked for or sacrificed for. When you pass on and you, if you leave an inheritance to your children, you're leaving an inheritance to your children that you worked for that they might not have. See, an inheritance that we receive is the fruit of someone else's labor. And so when the Lord is saying they, the, the meat shall inherit, that's not the fruit of their labor, it's the fruit of his labor. It, you don't inherit the earth by being meek because it's, 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 earned in its earned reward. It's not, well, if I'm meek enough, if I'm just humble enough, if I, if I just you know, humiliate myself enough and bow myself enough, I'll earn a great thing in the God's kingdom. It isn't about earning salvation. It's never salvation by works or even position in God's kingdom by works. It's simply we learn to move with gentle humility because it's a character of God. And then we inherit something we didn't work for. And, and we want to see that because there's a false humility that different religions fall into where they are always bowing themselves, humiliating themselves, prostrating themselves, trying to earn something special in God's eyes. But see, God sees in the hearts of men, not just the actions of men. And you, you have to understand that meekness is a heart condition. It's not just, it's not just an action. That, that gentle humility isn't something that you can pretend to have and God won't notice the difference. It's a heart condition. It's something Jesus has done in you. And, and we have to see that, that people trying to show how humble they are, they don't have humility because they wouldn't be trying to show it. Remember, it's strength that's not flaunted. Humility is a strength. When you flaunt it, you no longer have humility. And, and it's that idea and so this is something you receive that you don't work for. It's not something you fight for or struggle after. It's the reception of a promise. And only the Lord can bestow this inheritance on us as it's his. When he says the meek shall inherit the land, or very literally the land, we, we read the earth usually in English translations. Uh, when, when the Lord says that, it's only the Lord can give it. It's not something you can grasp on your own. We're not clawing our way to heaven. We're walking with God until he releases that in our lives. And then he comes to this thing, what do we inherit? And he says the earth, but in the original language, 
it's this this phrase tame game and it's very literally the land the land now we would think of it as the earth you know like the dirt but he says that the land and and we get something out of that phrase from ancient Judaism that in ancient Judaism the land was the land of promise the land of Canaan they will inherit the land that I'm giving them and in fact that the ten in the Ten Commandments when the Lord says honor your father and mother and you have long life in the land I'm giving you see there's a promise with the obedience to that and it's the land and and so it comes to be a symbolic uh, gesture of the promise of God. That when he says they'll inherit the land, they'll inherit God's kingdom. They'll inherit the land of promise that God is giving. Not just they will inherit this earth, but the land that God wants to give. It's, it isn't about the globe or this present life. It's about what God wants to bestow on us as a, as a land of promise. And, and think about that. Are you struggling to earn this earth? Are you struggling to cling to what's here? Or are you wanting to inherit what God has planned for you? And Napoleon, in a moment of great insight mentioned uh speaking of the priest that surrounded him at the time said i'm surrounded by clerics who claim their kingdom is not of this world but they do everything in their power to grasp what the the, the wealth of this kingdom and, and and what he was saying is here are these money grubbing ministers that only want to inherit this earth and they're not really thinking about the very kingdom they preach god has a land for his people and it isn't it isn't this earth it's the new heaven and the new earth it's god's ultimate reward for us now this entire concept is tied to god's law of sowing and reaping and and it's well it's not a it's not a legalistic thing it's simply what 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 you sow you reap the seeds you plant are the seeds that grow and so we see the law of sowing and reaping. I'm going to read it in two different translations. <clears throat> it's Galatians 6, 7. And it says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man may sow, that he also will reap. Make no mistake about this. So here I am reading again. Make no mistake about this. You can never make a fool out of God. Whatever you plant is what you will harvest. And so that was literal translation and God's word translation. If you sow seeds of gentle humility, meekness, you will reap the crop from those seeds, which is the land of promise. Now think about that. You plant gentle humility to reap the inheritance of God. And that's the turning the other cheek. What we seek to accomplish in God's kingdom isn't accomplished through political fights. It's accomplished through living for Jesus according to the character and nature of Jesus Christ. And just as God stood up for Moses, he will stand up for you. And that is a promise from the Lord. If you, if this, if you want to apply this into your family relationships, in your workplace, in whatever struggles you may have, if you just stick with Jesus and live with gentle humility, God will stand up for you. The Lord has reminded me of a, of a situation when I was in Bible college when that was the case. And I was working my way through college in a grocery store. And I was, it was my senior year and I was graduating. And I, by the time I graduated, I knew I was already going into the pastor of my first church. And all that's going on. And, and, and the grocery store that I was working in, <clears throat> there was a guy just over me in authority who really sought out to to attack my christianity and uh he would you know he'd come up and while i'm working and try to show me dirty pictures and he'd make comments and he'd say things and he's always digging at me and in fact what he called me my name he, he thought my name was christ jr that's what he called me when he saw me he'd say hey christ jr do this hey christ jr do that and that went on for a couple of years and uh it, and, I, and I just took it and I just, you know, kept working with him and doing my thing and just leaving it. 
And my, the, my last week there, when I was getting ready, you know, to finish up there and I was going to go pastor, uh, he came up to me and said, uh, I know you're the real deal and you'll do a really good job there. See, in all that, God was sticking up for me. If I would have yielded to the flesh, the witness wouldn't have been there. And, and that's what I'm talking about. Meekness matters. That if you yield to the flesh and stick up for number one, you're not going to see the glory of God as he interacts to let you inherit the land. And that's exactly why faith leads to meekness. I believe in what God said, so I seek the discipline of meekness. And yes, it is a discipline. It, 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 I, don't, I don't think of meekness or gentle humility as a gift that falls on my head. I think it's a muscle that gets stronger as I exercise it. And, and, and it is a discipline. And, and I believe in what Jesus says, therefore I discipline myself in this regard. If you don't like to eat corn. So I'm talking about seeds that we plant. Remember, this is the packet of seeds, and I've been talking about seeds a lot lately. And, and, and if you don't like to eat corn, you shouldn't plant corn. If you plant corn in your garden, you're going to grow corn in your garden. I happen to like corn. Most people do. I'm just using it as an illustration. But if you plant corn, you're going to grow corn. Whatever seed you plant is the seed that grows. Now, when we think of that spiritually, if you plant bitterness, you, bitterness is going to grow. If you plant fear, fear is going to grow. If you plant hatred, hatred will grow. If you plant uh, arrogance, arrogance grows. And, and whatever you plant grows. And if you don't like the fruit of arrogance, then you should plant meekness in your garden. And, and that, that's the kind of thing that will live under the shade of your faith tree. That you plant meekness in your soul because you don't like the fruit of arrogance. And, and we come to this knowledge as we're wrapping this up. The less we depend on God for fruit, the less Christianity manifests any kind of meekness. The more we think we know how to do it, the less we manifest gentle humility. The more we think our programs and our solutions and, and what we try to get done is what causes the move of God, the less we see a move of God and the less we see meekness in our lives. During the age of martyrdom, if we just look at it in the first three centuries of the church, it wasn't legislation or rebellion that changed the world. It was the meekness of the saints. The, the, the martyrdom changed and, and the Roman Empire that was killing Christians changed into an empire that was promoting Christianity, not because people legislated, not because they voted in the right politicians, not because they rebelled or fought or threw bricks through windows or anything like that. It happened because... The Christians were gentle and humble, and people saw it. And it wasn't the Christians that caused the, the demise of martyrdom. It was the people who said they were tired of seeing good people destroyed. And it was, it was people seeing the meekness of Christians who started to speak out against it. And it changed things. The, the first several centuries, you know, the first almost thousand years, first millennium of the church, <clears throat> the church never took up a weapon. It never manifested violence. It never fought a war or anything. And it wasn't until they began to think in terms of holy wars that the church lost its testimony as a Christian nation or a Christian people because it lost its meekness. When you take up the weapons of this world, you will lose your meekness. Christians fight for their right, who fight for their rights won't get to see God fight for them. If you fight for your rights, you will not get to see God fight for you. Meekness is a matter of faith. That gentle humility is the ability to turn the other cheek. 
it is a fruit of the kind of faith that says i know in whom i have believed and i know that he is a let's power has lord i just thank you for your word and your truth and i pray that your holy spirit would use this time in our lives and your holy spirit would use this message in our souls and that we would be changed in our thinking that we would want to retain a sense of meekness that we too as our lord and savior describes himself as meek and lowly that we too would be willing to be meek and lowly on this earth in the name of jesus amen and that we would be people that would forgive and turn the other cheek thank you lord lord bless you guys we'll see you next week